an issue when making a multi-system is that each of these controllers uh, for the different video console systems are proprietary. Uh, there's only one or two exceptions to that. Um, though of course we'll have different buttons in different places, but the bottom line is you can't have a series of boards all connected to each other and expect them to work. So they all have to be kept separated. Um, so what I've done for that end is to use, um, as a host controller, these original Nintendo NES cartridges. There's actually plenty of space inside, um, albeit sometimes you need a little bit of trimming, to put the board in place along with the jammer connections that I'm using as the interface to the master controller um, to enable you to finish with um, a controller inside each box. So I've made up a variety of these, um, Sega Saturn, N64 etc. So when you want to play a particular game, like for example the N64, you just pop it into place inside the master controller like this, push it home and then to all ends and purposes this is an N64 controller. You notice that there's a variety of different buttons etc on here. Um, there's a standard D-pad, action buttons, two joysticks because of course the GameCube and PlayStation require that. There's actually two D-pads here because on a normal D-pad if you press for example these two buttons you get a diagonal movement. It doesn't work that way with a television so therefore it's got its own D-pad for that purpose. There's a keypad here um, again because some games like for example the, um, the television require those buttons to be used to play the game properly. But also some systems need six buttons as opposed to four so um, the idea of this pad is to either um, allow you to use them directly in the game or to perform different functions like for example uh, start a game, select a little illustration of what the actual buttons here do and it does also provide a very good way when you're playing a game that you can tell it with the overlay as to what they do. For example, the uh, C buttons on the N64, if we're playing Doom, we know if you press this it does run. You don't have to have to memorize them. So the master controller is very easy to hold, it doesn't get in the way of the cartridge, easy access to everything, they will fit in the right place. Shoulder buttons on the top and these have been separated so that this is um, a pushy tactile switch as opposed to a normal clicky one. Um, so if you're having a variable uh, input, like for example with the GameCube, you can just press this one down and then as a final click activate the other one. So this one controller can act as the master controller for all of the consoles going into the Unity system just by changing one cartridge to another one we could change it from being an N64 to being a Sega Saturn and that is all we need to do to activate it. Every part of this master controller has been made from scratch a lot of modding work has gone into it but we've ended up with a fully customised easy to hold controller, very lightweight and uh, so it will work with all the systems, complete with personalised overlays. So as per previous video, this of course is the um, Unity system, partially made, but that's going to be uh, running for this demonstration. Using a box standard little television at the moment, just to illustrate that uh, everything is working as it should, I put in the N64 cartridge and selected onto Rumble feature, as I put the uh, combined card into place. We now turn the system on with the Mario game. You can then see the joystick working all nicely, etc. Hello. So, we've got this 
button for the start. We'll just select the default. It's a good game to illustrate because the uh, Mario character, um, you can get the uh, the joystick not working properly. You get tippy toes when he's not moving. As you see, this one works absolutely perfectly. And of course, all the usual buttons, the usual controls that you have. That's the uh, B button. Oh, sorry, that's the B button. That's right. Because these two aren't required in this game. There's the Z button. So you can do your usual jump and everything else that you're doing. And that is the N64. If we then turn the system off, and change to the Saturn. Just slight delay while I make the necessary adjustments. Okay, the Unity system has now selected to play Saturn. I take this out, pop in the Sega Saturn cartridge. And turn it on. Notice this is all in live mode. What we now have is the master controller acting as a Sega Saturn. I could put the overlays on here. What I've had to do for the Saturn is to have the Y and the Z buttons um, over on these. And in this case, for this particular game, Exhumed, that's for just changing your uh, character's weapon. Let's go through the initial screens. It's a very good Doom type clone game actually. Sorry, wrong button, that's right. Okay, so if we load the existing game, let it run. Getting into the game itself, and here we go. This, of course, uses the D pad. You can also strafe with the shoulder buttons, and um, you've got all the usual facilities that you do with the game. So, that's game number two, as you see, fully working. Switch that system off now. Next one we'll put on board will be the Neo Geo again as always change the cartridge pop it in place there we go onto the Neo Geo system this uses the keypad for the start And as you see, all these systems, even when they're proprietary, are all completely happy to work together. And so on and so forth. And lastly, the PlayStation. PlayStation 2. Let's get that one going. Again, made a customised case for it. Pop it into place. There she goes. Turn the system on. This is the, um, the fussiest of the systems I've come across with the PlayStation. The controller will only work if everything is absolutely right. But it's a good, um, it's a good test bed. Now 
just had to do that slight break in the um, in the video the memory card was getting a bit full if there was going to be an error it would show down here no controller port but as you see it's working it'll then um, access the card which has been hardwired in place and then we'll go down to the uh, tutorial because we don't need to have any other characters moving around in this game for this quick demonstration. This is a good game to show again the joysticks working, shoulder buttons etc. Let's take a little bit of time to boot. That's a very good version of uh, Quake 3. So, there we go. As I said, if I just move it to the side, um, you know, I'm using it anyway. There's no jitter or judder at all with the joystick. The other one works, of course, in tandem. And uh, you can play your game as well. The um, shoulder buttons, of course, do what they do, and you've got the strafing, and the fire, um, select weapons, and of course the jump. So. so I'll click last for a few seconds. demonstration of four different systems working. Of course there'll be um, around 20 systems working in total on the final system. Thank you for watching.